is an exclusive presentation of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Sports. The experience of ACC basketball is like no other, a continuous display of excitement beyond belief. Here comes Harrison, lets it go with time. Oh, he made it, and it's a three! It's a three! It's a, three. It's a win for NC State! Incredible shot by CC Harrison on the balance! Frustrations too hard to handle. Rivalries built far beyond expectations. Tonight, the tradition continues as two of the top teams in the country square off in a Cameron Indoor shootout. It's number six Duke and number eight Clemson next. in the ACC and across the country on number eight Clemson and number six Duke live from Cameron Indoor Stadium our ACC game of the week two truly creme de la creme teams when you look at the top eight thus the importance of tonight's matchup not only in this league but nationally hello everyone I'm Tim Brando Billy I'm Packer by my side and Billy we're talking about a Duke team that now not only can win the ACC but solidify a possible number one if they can continue to roll and in the case of Clemson this is a club that would like to be a number two seed in the national tour. I think it's possible for both of these clubs and of course we know a number one has never lost to a 16 which is a great position to get into and of course these games are really critical for both clubs in that respect and for the ACC tournament as well that seeding is important. It's very fashionable to have a three guard offense but for Duke it's live by the sword and die by it and in the big games Clemson's perimeter has to play well. Well Duke really is, is in a situation and they're playing that perimeter game almost with five guards but you can see how well they do from the three point range. Clemson does not do well statistically but in games that they win and play well they've got to get good outside shooting so they can go inside and pound it against a Duke club that really has a hard time with an inside game. Spacing along the perimeter and defense you're going to see plenty of it tonight as number eight meets number six Clemson and Duke back after this word from Budweiser. ACC basketball is brought to you by Pepsi, by Nations Bank, by Bell South, by Budweiser, by CarQuest Auto Parts Stores, and by Food Lion. Yet another sellout here at Cameron Indoor Stadium, Duke. Playing host to the Clemson Tigers, two top eight teams here in our ACC game of the week. The starting lineups for Clemson, Eterbe, they're hoping for big things from him through the course of this game. Did not play well in the prior meeting. Weidman will be in the middle. Buckner, the in-between player to go with Code and McIntyre, who need to play their best tonight. Because Duke has gone small. In the prior meeting, you'll recall, Greg Newton started, had a very difficult night. Since that time, Duke has made other teams match up with their guards. McLeod, Langdon, Wojciechowski, and the always athletic Carowell with Jeff Capel, a real comeback player for the Blue Devils this season. Back with the start of our game after this message from Bell South. Time to buckle up as the sixth ranked Devils once again come face to face with the eighth ranked Clemson Tigers. The rock and rematch at a jam packed Cameron Indoor Stadium is ready to roll. You know, Tim, when you look at these guys, it's amazing the physique of, of what a college basketball player has become when you look at the highest level of the game. Every one of these guys are really chiseled. The turbay with that cutoff arms is the first thing that drew my attention to it. But every one of these guys are really put together. Our officials tonight, Dick Paparo, Duke Etzel, and Larry Rose. Weidman comes out high looking for a turbo low, but he slipped. McIntyre penetrates, took an extra step. And there's a turnover, which sometimes come few and far between for McIntyre and Wojciechowski. Both of them, both of them do a great job in the backcourt, not only piling up assists, but staying away from that turnover. 
Today at Duke's shoot-around, Mike Krzyzewski spent a lot of time, Billy, talking about spacing along the perimeter. Make sure you don't get jammed up and play Clemson's game. But what is so great about watching a Duke team practice is the way they now surround the outside on that perimeter. Everybody's setting screens. And that creates a lot of matchups because inside people are not used to playing that far away from the basket and having to pick up a guard. Wideman nice. dumped down to Butler. Goes to the left hand and it's 2 nothing. Beautiful post up move and this is where Clemson can really take advantage of Duke because they want to go down inside. Duke wants to score on the perimeter. Wideman being asked to go outside and guard somebody. He's got Carroll. Capel with a three. 3-2 three Blue Devils. 90 seconds deep from Cameron Indoor Stadium. Now, Turpe back in this lineup changes some things, and the main thing it does is the fact that McIntyre doesn't have to have the ball in his hands all the way up the court. So they really have three guys that can handle a point position, the Turpe, Cole, and McIntyre in this game. The Turpe with the pull-up. Using the glass, can't hit. As touched by Duke. Rick Barnes, 42 years young, has really turned things at Clemson now in his third year, four and one in his career at Duke. That ought to say enough, shouldn't it? Sure should. <laughs> How many can boast that kind of one loss record against the Blue Devils? Has a chance to sweep them this year. At least in regular season. You can see these two teams facing each other again somewhere down the road in postseason play. Turbe was hoping that Weidman would have cut to the basket. He did not. Absolutely. That was really Weidman's turnover, not at Turbe's. It was a good pass. Weidman just didn't come hard to the ball. Good ball movement to the now There's two perimeter shots by Duke. One by Capel and one by McLeod. And you saw what happened to Turbe now has to go out 22 feet and handle somebody defensively. So big adjustments. Six two Blue Devils. Nice switch by Langdon on that play. McIntyre was open. Bojo got caught on the screen. Code. Trying to drive baseline and draws the foul from Wojciechowski. Here we see that perimeter I was talking about. You see a turbo not used to going out, shutting a man down from 22 feet. Mike Krzyzewski, 17 seasons at Duke, nearing his 400th victory with the Blue Devils. He has 397 here in his 17 seasons, 470 career wins in 22 years of coaching. The first game code was three for five from three. At 12 points. Some of the key players in that ball game. Of course, I guess the key stat was right here on this particular aspect of the game. Free throw shooting. Clemson was 22 of 23 against Duke for a new school record. One of the real keys to this game for the Blue Devils, if they are to uh, avenge that loss, might be getting to the free throw line themselves. As perimeter based as they've been, that could become a problem spot. Carolwell gets into the scoring column. That's the first deuce for Duke. The others coming beyond the arc. It's eight to four. Witt in the ball game now. Remember, down at Clemson, Witt had a very good basketball game. He's not played that much or effectively of late. Out of bounds to the Blue Devils. Witt and Jameson, so the first changes in the lineup. And uh, three, Andrea Shirkunas will check into the game for the first time. Number three in orange. So he hooks up with Jamison, Witt, Code, and McIntyre on the floor for Rick Barnes' team. You know, Jim, you, you think of Clemson and all the depth and the multiple changes that they make. They've got three guys in their club that are averaging 30 minutes or more per game. Duke only has one. Nice team. Code with the strip. Waiting for a little foul, and uh, Capel slips. It's a little floor burn as he was headed there. Code was actually holding up, hoping for some contact that wasn't there. Well, you, he obviously knew that Jeff is a guy that has great jumping ability. There was the terrific steal by Code. He takes off, but he knows Capel's coming behind him. And Capel certainly, with his leaping ability, capable of going up and pinning that ball. Unfortunately, nobody hurt on the play. It's 
see McIntyre basically doing the same thing with Wojo as happening to him on the other end. They don't want Wojo to have the ball in his hands. Conversely, neither does Duke want uh, McIntyre. Langdon gets the block from Butler. Trajan Langdon has been on fire this season. He has uh, been a real answer from the perimeter. 49% from beyond the arc. That's uh, almost obscene. 73 of 148. Five threes and 25 points against Clemson in the first game. Offensive foul against Jeff Campbell. Timeout just underway, and the Blue Devils lead the Tigers by two. Back after this message from Budweiser. Atlantic Coast Conference basketball on Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports. Along with Billy Packer, Tim Brando, welcoming you into Cameron Indoor Stadium. It has been bombs away through the course of this season for the Duke Blue Devils. It, it, interesting setup right here, Tim. Nobody guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds, but McLeod back long, so easy for Jamison to come and get. Duke was hit two from beyond the arc. Already in this game. McIntyre, little floater. Witt picks up the air ball, but he took steps. How about that maneuverability by McIntyre to get over? It didn't make the shot. But some ball him. Langdon runs the curl right past Butler. Counted and a foul. Terrific job by Trajan. He, he actually came off the curl. The defender expected the jump shot, and he just put it into overdrive and went right by. Now watch, the defender stops. Butler stops, plants his feet to get ready for the jump shot, to defend the jump shot. And Langdon just puts it in overdrive and continues right on through for the layup. Fine play. Dirk Kunis picked up the foul, his first. Second team foul. One of the things that Clemson is not doing, and that is getting the ball down the low post. They got Buck through the ball early in the game on a nice post up play. Jamison, who had his biggest game prior to Kentucky this year, 18 right here on his score last year. I think they need to go down inside, even with Newton into the ball game now. Newton has come in. Carmen Wallace also on the floor for Duke, as is Ricky Price. As Capel, McLeod, and Carowell take a seat for Mike Krzyzewski's team. There it is. And he draws the foul. Wallace, tremendous lift for the block to stop an easy two, but good play by Clemson to go down inside. That's where it can happen for him. Perfect bounce pass. And Jamison, who, as I said last year, had his biggest career game right here in Durham. He was 12 for 13 from the free throw line. And I, I really think, Jim, we see this a lot. A guy who happens to have good games against certain teams, you, know, you want to get him the ball early and see if it continues. Your Kunis leaves and the Turbe comes back in. And against Duke, particularly with the smaller lineup, and Newton, yes, he gets some minutes as he's in the game now. One would think that Rick Barnes would have to match up with Jamison much more so than Wyden through the course of the game. Exactly. He's, he's offensive minded and Newton is not going to come up with big points which Weidman's real key is his excellent defense against post people. Good match up here. Langdon working on Buckner. Same oh, deal. Right past him. How about that? Boy the movement without the basketball a real catalyst for Langdon against Butler. Well, he comes off that curl move. He's such a great perimeter shooter. You've got to play him for the jump shot. And twice now, Langdon has just kept coming with the, with the dribble right off the curl for a layup. Herman Wallace picked up the foul off the ball. Terrific job here. You'll see him come, keeps right on coming. And for the second time, Butler gets caught, figuring he's going to stop and look for the jump shot, square up, but he doesn't do it. Duke launching more shots than Clemson. And you can bet more shots on goal, particularly with a perimeter-based team, is important to Coach K tonight. They score so many times off inbounds plays. This time, it's a pickpuck. Good job by Jamison to help out. Wojciechowski getting the steal. Price and a pick. And used it. Can't hit. Cleared out to McIntyre. Terrell. Oh, what a look to Buckner. And he bricked it. He doesn't do that often. Jamison stays with it. 
Topal. Oh, the size and the strength. And we're really going to see a game of contrast here tonight. These two teams matched up very evenly, not only in the polls, but in the conference standings and in their competitive balance. But you've got a team that can really do the job down inside. There's McIntyre. Buckner very seldom misses anything down in low here. But Jamison with his good hands and power inside. Gets the ball knocked away, gets it right back, and just overpowers Duke. I think Coach K was upset that he didn't get the player control foul on McIntyre on that dribble drive into the lane. What Coach K is trying to do right now is get the referee's attention. He knows that this game could be one of those nail biters, and he wants to make sure he's getting every edge he can. And let's talk about the pressure the referees are under in this ball game based on what's happened in the last week uh, in the ACC. I think it's magnified officiating throughout the country beyond just this league. Price, Newton to follow. Count the basket. It went through anyway. Jamison got his hand on it after it hit the backboard. Price has missed his first two, but in his last five games, he's averaging 13 points and almost four rebounds a game. So he looks very positive. Nice screen by Newton. There's Price pulling up for a jumper. Doesn't quite stay with that shot, drifts a little bit. There's the blockout situation that allows Newton to follow up. Greg had such a difficult night in that uh, January meeting in Clemson. Not only the dropped pass that really caused the game in, to go into overtime, you see the game summary from that matchup. Five Clemson players finished in, in double figures. They had a lot of balance, and their bench, Billy, was a big factor. They outscored Duke's bench 28 to 5 in that game. A wit particularly coming in early and often. But that game really came down to one play, and, and it might have had, as you mentioned to me before the uh, before the game, a lot to do with Newton not really playing up the car. It had one play that could have sealed it for Duke, the pass from Wojo to Newton, and he was all alone under the basket to finish off the game, and the ball went right through his hands. And if you recall, in the overtime, he also missed a tip in for point blank grade, so he went away uh, disconsolate. And it has affected his overall play. And the, the change in lineup came shortly thereafter by Shushevsky. But have a five. Oh, got it. Armin Wallace right in your Kunis' face. Now here we have for the first time McIntyre out of the game. So you don't have your primary ball handler out there. Code gives it up. He's got to understand with McIntyre out of there, he's got to control the ball a little more. Tigers have turned it over five times. Six and a half minutes deep. Rice. Boy, he's playing possibly. Even though, as I said, he missed his first two shots, you can just see that he knows that he's on a good string right now. Throughout his career, they've been waiting for an offensive explosion from Price. He's matched up with Buckner. Let's see if Buckner gets him down in low. Back screen, here he comes. There it is. Terrific job by Clemson to recognize that matchup. Nice you know, Buckner, it's not that he gives uh, you, you an advantage with height, but at six foot five, and I'd say that's about what he is, six four and a half, six five, he plays like six eight down in the low post, so it's a very difficult matchup. He knows how to get position, he's strong, a lot of moves inside with both the right and the left hand. Two fouls adding up on Duke. To play a much more physical brand against this Clemson team that is more powerful down low. It's tough to double team this team outside with a turbie. He's such a good passer. Loose ball finally corralled by Langdon. Duke's lead is six, looking for their largest lead at this possession. Price is right. Terrific job by Jeff Capel, and you know, I, I think confidence is such a factor in sports. We see Capel now playing with confidence, Price playing with confidence, a whole different ball club to try to beat. And you can see the fans and Ricky Price telling you it's uh, time to come on down to Durham tonight. Our call of the week comes from Sunday's North Carolina State Wake Forest game. Take a look at Tony Rutland guarded closely by Justin Ganey. Gets the ball stolen and Ganey takes it straight up the court. And he'll get the easy layup. The score put the game into overtime. And as you know, NC State went on to that controversial win. The Wolfpack smart guard play, our call of the week. 
There's Price hitting the outside jumper. Remember, he came into this game, missed his first two. I'd say a month ago, after missing two, he might have shied away from taking shots. Now he just looks to get that ball back in the hands and shoot it up. Duke leading by nine, largest lead of the night. McIntyre. Beauty. Right to Buckner. Buckner hadn't been so strong there. He'd have picked up a foul because Wallace hit him from behind. Eight minutes gone by. Duke by seven. Langdon using the clock. You almost had to say that was a bad shot. Hit it anyway. Trajan has seven. Got that shooter's touch. Duke is shooting at a marvelous clip, better than 70% from the floor to open this game. A turbo going to the left hand. 22 to 15. Turbe bothered by injuries at the start of this year. You can see now he looks like he's in much better condition, much quicker. Wallace on the floor with Langdon Capel, Rashawn McLeod, and Ricky Price for the Blue Devils. And notice how a few times Duke will have somebody in the paint. So basically that entire area, you don't have any help as a defender when a guy gets by you. McLeod turns it over. Chappelle and Carwell will come in after the dead ball. Oh, Terrell McIntyre with some quality Sunday best dishes on Tuesday. We'll be back. It's so important for the offensive player if he's to get around a, a defense that's as tenacious as Clemson. And again, as you can see right there, a good curl move that time by Langdon. And no one back there to help defensively because there is nobody in the low post. Duke shooting 75%, 9 for 12. Just terrific shooting, and I really think if Clemson's going to turn this game around, they've got to get so that down on their end of the floor, the ball is in the paint a lot. You see a three for five from beyond the arc for Duke. Clemson an over. So they've been outscored by nine from three-point range, and the deficit that Clemson faces is seven. That first game, overtime ball game, 86-82. It looks like we're on schedule for a game up in the 80s. Buckner working against Carroll. Out to McIntyre. Get fouled on the arm. No call. Capel may have gotten a hand in there. I think you're right. Oh, without question. I mean, it's either it's got to be Clemson's ball either on a foul or a block. Duke trapping again. The turbe is so tough to trap. Great move. Flashing in that lane and Buckner found him. It's 22 to 17. I think when I think when a turbase in the ball game, Clemson becomes a very difficult team to trap because he becomes the third and primary ball handler and he gets in around that foul line. And in this particular case, he scored. But believe me, he can find the open man in there as well. Dribble. Good block. Jamison got a hand in there, and now a steal by Buckner. Numbers three on two for Clemson. Well, we touched on spacing that time, not quite enough for the Tigers. Well, well, think of what happened right here. Buckner has the ball. He's in the center, being the man to be the dish. The problem is for Clemson, you'd like McIntyre in the center and dishing off the Buckner. I guarantee you, reverse rolls in that particular play, and Clemson capitalized on the three on two break. Capel. Jamison clear. The Turbe long. He <laughs> foul off the ball. Illegal screening. Buckner tried to set a back screen. Foul and he and a Turbe actually sandwiched. I believe it was McLeod on the play. Steve Wojciechowski We'll see the screening right here. The Turbe. <laughs> The Turbe and Buckner got in a sandwich situation, both trying to help each other out. So he care picking up his first foul. That's the third team foul against the Tigers. Duke having committed already six in this game. We're just over the halfway mark in the opening half. Carwell. He's got an explosive first step. Manages the block. That's a tough matchup right there for Jacunas to try to handle Carwell, who has a much quicker first step than he has. But when you play Duke, you have got to be in a position, all five players, to go out and guard somebody on the perimeter. That's why they're so tough to match up with. 
So and then you say, well, why don't you play them zone? Because they're such good perimeter shooters, you play a zone and they can shoot from outside. That's the second foul on this field. Butler with an excellent block. Code has been very quiet in this game. But a little stop and go. He too manages contact. It'll go against Duke. Chappelle picking it up. Freshman from Southfield, Michigan. Both of these teams can go 10 deep with quality basketball players. So when they go to the bench, it's not that they're bringing somebody in just for a few minutes that can't contribute. Now is a great time to order Pizza Hut's new pepperoni pizza. Pizza Hut making it great again and again. Why did you figure now is a good time for a pizza? <laughs> what, was, what was that? Well, I had a momentary pause. Oh, nice. Nice. So the guy at home. I don't know about you, but I could scoff down a whole uh, pepperoni pizza right now. And you know, when you look at the score, Duke is shooting, as we mentioned earlier at the break, they, they were up to 75%. But right now, Clemson has a chance to move this thing within three. They're quietly staying in the ball game. Yeah, I was about to say, you're right. You, you watch the way this game is developed, and you look at Duke's shooting percentage, and they should be ahead by double digits. Oh, Wojo, rack to rack. And get Weidman, who's an excellent defensive really underestimated Wojo's ability to take that thing all the way to the hoop. I don't think he had any intention of taking it all the way and then finishing off with a layup. He was looking to pass, but nobody picked him up. Weidman working pick and roll here. Got the ball down low and was tied up by McLeod. And the arrow to do. Now look at how long. He goes about 85 feet here for this layup. He's waiting for somebody to stop him. Nobody does. Weidman comes over much too late to be in position not only for a good solid defensive play, but for an easy block. That's almost the angle he took against Virginia, Virginia. in the disputed less than five second end to end run that he made that allowed him the opportunity to get to the line. And that now infamous closing few seconds with the block problem. Bojo probably the least likely guy to take the three when he first gets it. But McLeod is a tough matchup because he can step out there and hit the three as well as take it uh, to the basket when he's down in the low post. Rashawn McLeod has five on the night. 26 to 19. McIntyre. Weidman high to hit it. And this time the arrow will be to Clemson on the tie ball. Clemson's ball on the ultimate possession. Cloud couldn't turn around. Jameson, normally a pretty good defender, couldn't handle him there. That's what's so tough about matching up with Duke's perimeter, Billy, is that they have guys that can break you down off the dribble. These are not stationary shooters, these guards. They can create for themselves. And it hasn't happened by accident. Uh, I mentioned before about a Duke practice. They work long hours and working on that perimeter offensive moves and jump shooting techniques. Wojciechowski takes it away from Witt. Langdon. Oh, oh set up foul. Oh, Drakin, you are special tonight. How about the shooter's touch there? That ball went up on the backboard and just looked like the air came out of it and stayed dead right on the rim. Here comes the steal. Wojo, so aggressive. Gets the break started. Then Langdon, and watch this ball just die on the rim. Hangs right there to fall through. Terrific touch. I don't know that I've seen a college basketball player use the glass. Look at the turnovers and the points off belonging to Duke. I think the last time I've seen a college player use the glass that well, you have to go back to Doom Haynes. Remember him back in the mid-80s? Used the glass all the time, played for Memphis. And there's a foul spotted against at least in the modern era, he's the one that comes to my mind, but Langdon high, arching off the glass. And has been very effective with it a couple of times. Now run that one by me again. You're going to say Doom Haynes. Doom Haynes. That was the best that, I, that, I can, that I've seen in, in, in maybe 10 or 12 years. You know, I'm not even going to argue about that one. I never saw Doom Haynes off the glass. Yes, you did. I know, but I mean, not that it, not it sticks in my mind. <laughs> uh, maybe Keith Wilkes or somebody when you start yeah. going back that far. Yeah. 
Wilkes so. or farther. Yeah. Well, you know, the greatest guy off the glass played pretty well in this town. Who was it? Durham, North Carolina. Probably the greatest off the glass shooter of all time. I should know. I probably do. How about Sam Jones? Uh, absolutely. He, didn't, <laughs> absolutely. he didn't play in the ACC, but he's probably the greatest off the glass he's ever been. Without question. Sunday afternoons right before American Sportsman. I remember watching it. <laughs> Duke's lead is double digits. It's up 10, 29, 19. <laughs> Trying to make the most of the break. Tate will shoot. Blocked by Barry. Barry. Danny Barry. What a play by Barry. All they got to do is hang on to the ball. Well, not only did he reject it, but he pulled it out of it. Great passing. There's Smith. Duke's going to win. And Duke is exuberant. Danny Barry leading that team and so many other greats. Having their numbers retired here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Under eight minutes remaining opening half here. Number six, Duke. Leading number eight, Clemson by ten. Smart play by Jamison to put it on the floor. That had been the second five-second count Clemson's had against him. Duke on a 6-0 run right now. Survey. Saved by E.K. And again, Clemson not establishing the low post game, which is something that they should be very effective with in this particular ball game, and just not doing it. They're playing Duke's game right now. Very unsure of themselves, don't they, Tim? They really do. McIntyre gets it to a turbo there. Everything begins high. Low post players coming out high, setting picks. We've seen very little post up on the low blocks by Jamison. McIntyre and Code stand right with the man that they're guarding. Not looking inside when the ball goes, which is a terrific move on their part. You cannot afford to try to help out down in low with guys like Price and Langdon on the outside with that jump shot. Tony Christie's coming to the game. He got that rebound moments ago, number 44 in arms. There he is underneath the hoop. He did not have control, so he didn't turn it over. Nice job by Newton blocking from behind without fouling. McLeod for three. Cleared by Crystal. If you talk to Rick Barnes and the staff about what player on the roster that's perhaps used off the bench that they believe they can get more from, it might be Tony Crystal. Well, he had the injury which really set him back. Maybe just starting to come around now. Again, look at the situation. Jamison out high, 23 feet from the basket, trying to make a play, as opposed to being down in tight where he can score. There he is. And a Turbay found him. That ability to pass that he can or a Turbay has. Finding Jamison roll into the hoop. He gets the deuce and the foul. It is really there for Clemson just to go into the paint and overpower Duke. Whenever they do, it's effective. The last two times down the floor, they've gone inside and it works. Cable has the foul, his second. Wojciechowski comes in, Trajan Langdon sits down, and Buckner re-enters. Tony Christie goes back to the bench. It's kind of interesting now in, in college basketball where you see a lot of people go into the three guard offense. Who matches up well with who? Wake Forest is a kind of a team that's interesting in that respect. Do you match up with their size or do you make them match up with your quickness as Duke did in the game over at uh, in Winston-Salem in which Duke won? Wojo, that's an offensive foul. Mike Krzyzewski disagrees. Mike's his third. Mike took a walk in the other direction. A big, big foul right there because Wojo is the guy that Duke wants with the ball in their hands. Let's see where this comes from. I don't buy, I don't buy the call at all. The, the original contact was not made by Wojo. And that's the second time he tried to take it to the hoop. He's going to have to sit for a while, and that really hurts Duke University. 29-24. Clemson has uh, carved that 10-point lead in half. Now let's see if McIntyre tries to take advantage of the fact that he's not being guarded by Wojo. Price is on him. High low, Weidman to Butler. Rejected. Took too much time. Wallace got a hand on it. Now a turbo with a steal. 
McIntyre in the open court, and Langdon picks up the foul. Probably a pretty good foul in that respect because Clemson had three on one break. First foul on Langdon. That's the tenth team foul against the Blue Devils. Here you see Buckner had to gather himself, and as he did, Wallace came from behind for the great block. In fairness to Buckner, he had to gather himself before he could go up. And how about a technical foul here on Mike? And that goes back to Rojo's foul. Yeah, he was working over Dick Paparo, and it was Paparo's call that angered Coach Gale. He is still hot. May get a second one here. McIntyre at the line. And, and what we have right now is Mike Krzyzewski saying, don't you go down and talk to the other coach without getting me in the conversation. So he's taken all of his experience in trying to work these officials. And as I said before, probably the players are under pressure in the ACC right now going down the stretch. The coaches are, but now the referees are as well. I think you noticed that Dick Paparo was making sure that Mike Krzyzewski got an explanation. But then when Mike was upset about it, Paparo let him know and know in certain terms that was enough to get back in the box. Now, what's really smart here from the official standpoint, you notice the official that called the technical has moved to the other side of the court. His partner has come over to talk with Mike. No sense going face to face with the guy that you're you, you started the argument with. All right, Larry Rose coming over to do some damage control. Good piece of officiating there. Yep. Nine nothing spurt for the Tigers. McIntyre. Wideman keeps it alive. Power. He took a bunny hop and got whistled for. Him. Clemson's turned it over 10 times. You now, Wideman's interesting. He has good defensive footwork, but not offensive footwork. He gets caught down the track and really gets in trouble. Let's see if that uh, technical foul now sends a sense of urgency to the Blue Devils because they have now been in the midst of watching Barnes's club come up with a 9 0 run. That was a mistake by Buckner. He guarded the man taking the ball out of bounds and took away the pass to the top of the key, allowed Langdon to come right down on the sidelines in shooting range. Buckner, tough shot. Not a good shot. A parallel right in his face. Now Price. Oh, crossover. Oh, yeah. Wave it off. And another off the glass shot by Duke. Price has got such an incredible first step. Foul was on number 11, Carl you see it right here. He catches the ball over his head. Watch this move. Wow. Just want to put a rope on him somewhere to slow him down. Code picking up his first foul. That's one of the reasons, Billy, that uh, everyone's been waiting for Ricky to have a, a real coming out party offensively. Put a few games together. There's another strip. Jamison got his hand in there to yep. cause that one. We see both teams now making some mental mistakes, trying to do things with the wrong people. They're not really capable. Wallace not the guy you want having that ball in his hands, but maybe with Wojo out there, some guys feeling they have to do a little bit extra. McIntyre wants Jamison to float low. Turbe in traffic to Buckner. He rolls it through. And you know who was matched up with Jamison that time is Langdon. Clemson really not recognizing what's available for him. Eight points in the game for Greg Buckner. Buckner really being asked to defend. Picks up the foul there. Buckner, second. he's trying to come over a screen and is late getting to Price just as he was with Langdon. And by being late getting there, you're in bad defensive position, and that's when you pick up a foul. Tony Christie coming back in. He'll be joined by McIntyre, Code, Eterbe, and Jamison. Look at that. Clemson living at the line as they did in the first encounter. Duke having a, a more difficult time getting there. But again, uh, sometimes you look at the uh, the box score at halftime as a coach, you get a little angry. But when you make the move and go small, you do forfeit opportunities at the strike, don't you? Well, they've shot 162 two more free throws than their opponents, and which is incredible when you take in consideration how much of their game is a perimeter-oriented game. 
gets one of the two. Christie recovers it. Blue Devils by a deuce. Just under four remaining in the opening half. Jim Brando, Billy Packer with you. Happy to have you with us. From Durham. Drew Mason, a lot of screens down inside, trying to get free for the pass. So then he can make another pass inside. McIntyre right to Jamison. McIntyre comes to great jump stops and creates a little bit of breathing room for himself on those passing lanes. Quietly, Billy, Jamison's putting up some numbers. He has 10. And where are they? Right down in the paint. Price rejected by Jamison. Out of bounds to Clemson. Tigers have outscored the Blue Devils. 13 to 3. Watch how he's under control with a great little jump stop and Jamison completes. Back after a word from Carquest. First team, Mike. Tied at 32 at Cameron Indoor Stadium, and a couple of teams with more than a passing interest in our game tonight hook up tomorrow in Chapel Hill. And a monster matchup with Forrest. Now with that door open for Duke, you know that they're rooting for Clemson tonight. And then they've got to take on the Tar Heels. And uh, there's an old friend and colleague. Hockey Waters uh, spent a few uh, hours on the sidelines here as both an assistant to Vic Bubis and the great Vic Bubis 10 year run at uh, Duke and then came back as a as a head coach as well. Player for Everett Case at NC State. Jameson was wide open and McIntyre failed to see him in time. Shot clock winding down to near 10. And McIntyre is so tough off that dribble. He double dribble. That, that's the second turnover inside. Terrific job by Price. And he's given up a lot of size there to Price, but Price has that great quickness. He's able to stay with him. During that last time out, it was kind of interesting. Mysiszewski spent about two thirds of the time talking to the referee. Tommy Amaker handled the timeout situation. He's still trying to work. Langdon. Trajan on fire in this half. He's up to 15. 25 in the first game and not letting up, huh? Clemson on that last possession had their first chance to take a lead in this ball game. A lot of back screening by Clemson in this offensive set. Looks like it's going to get down to Price and McIntyre. Everything begins with a high pick and roll. The third bay on the offensive glass, and now Jameson will pick up the over the back foul. It's second. Price is, is really doing a fine job on McIntyre because he's got about four inches on him and just as much quickness. So McIntyre has to recognize that and not maybe wait so long to start some kind of offensive flow going. Their most effective offense really has been when they low post player comes outside Billy sets a high pick and then rolls Takes off getting that in between shot for Buckner we've seen it a couple of times during the course of this game McIntyre with a couple of turnovers night came into the game with 144 assists only 43 turnovers his counterpart Bojo sitting on the bench with three fouls three very important fouls for Duke University he's got a three to one turnover assist ratio you consider that third foul to Wojciechowski and what Duke has been able to maintain with him off the floor. Very important the closing stages of this half that they maintain this lead, particularly the way they've been shooting the ball. Clemson taking their time here. I think it'd be their advantage to pick up the pace a little bit with Wojo sitting on the bench. Langdon trying to fight through the uh, Turbe pick. Runs through it and picks up the foul. That's his second. Turbe really set some wide screens out there, and I thought he was moving in that particular play. And I think uh, Coach Yashevsky did as well. I was telling Duke Edsel the same thing. Turbe is wide. But when you're moving your feet, you become double wide. It's a rare miss for Merle, an 82% free throw shooter. Senior out of Greenville, South Carolina. Fork Union prep. 37-33. 135 and counting. 
Mike wants to take one of his 20s here, take advantage of it in the first half, and make sure his team can control this lead with a good shot. You know, we touched on uh, matchups. It's interesting. Duke, I think, much like Odom at Wake Forest, he went large, he went tall, and made Clemson match up. They couldn't. Duke, I think, pr probably would have a favorable matchup against about any team in the ACC besides this one when they go small. Clemson's a pretty good team to match up with. Here. Well, they do. They probably can match up better, and of course, they can match up with, with depth probably better than any team in the league as well. And Rick Barnes can come off that bench with uh, five or six players that uh, can move into that lineup and play particularly well. And look at Clemson goes for the first time to a zone defense. And Mike Krzyzewski takes the 20-second timeout to set up a specific play. Price trying to save it, does so, but right into the hands of Cole. That was a nice chess match between two coaches right there. Krzyzewski wanting to set up a specific play. Barnes turns the tables on him by going zone to take away any advantage that play might have had. Clemson trying to get into that painted area where they've been most effective tonight. Duke still living by that sword we talked about at the open. McIntyre forcing the issue out of bounds. Last touch by the Tigers. Nobody to pass to on the inside with Jamison out of that lineup. Weidman just doesn't come well to the ball. He's failed to score in this game, and you see Witt will check in on the next dead ball. Now Rick Barnes calls him back. And they stay in the zone defense, matching up out of a 1-3-1. Great ball fans. Christie clears for Clemson. One shot here for Clemson. The way this game has gone for Rick Barnes, I'm sure he'd love to go to the uh, locker room down only two or, or even four for that matter. Duke shooting better than 60% for the first half. However, I, I think that they might have been able to pick up the tempo with Wojo sitting on the bench with those three fouls. He's been sitting there for a long time. Clemson might have been better off in a little bit more of an up-tempo game. Cole, he's down. Yep. Good job by Wallace. 2.9 remaining on the clock for the Blue Devils. See, no interior offense in the game right now. A is a passer. Weidman doesn't come to the ball, so with Jamison out of there and Buckner out of there, you don't have anybody down in the paint that can score for Clemson. So their biggest advantage is not working for them at all with the lineup they have on the floor. Wynn has come into the game. Langdon, who's been on fire in this half, launches the last one. That's the first shot he's missed that hit the backboard tonight. The Blue Devils lead it by four, 37-33. And this matchup of two top 10 teams looking to advance where seating's concerned for the ACC and the NCAA tournament. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Nationwide Insurance, by Fairfield Inn, Point lead at one point, 29 to 19. That lead is now down to four. We're at halftime, 37-33. Tim Brando back again with you. It's interesting to note that in this game, the Clemson bench has outscored Dukes again. But the problem has been they've turned it over far too many times, and that's one of the reasons Duke has seized the lead, that along with the fact that they're shooting better than 60% from the floor. Let's take a look at our Budweiser scoreboard, other games, and a couple of surprises. Purdue on the road knocking off Indiana so a big story there for Gene Katie's team Cincinnati rolls against Houston and South Carolina out to a quick start against Arkansas that's a very meaningful game for the Razorbacks who are clearly on the bubble ACC action last weekend North Carolina knocked off Georgia Tech Clemson beating Virginia 71 65 Duke beat Florida State 89 79 as they could not match up with the Duke guards and North Carolina State with that heroic last shot by Harrison. Disputed though it may have been, the impact will be felt for the remainder of this regular season for Wake Forest as Duke now has an opportunity tonight to seize control of the top spot. Wake, you'll recall, has North Carolina tomorrow, a game most of you will see along the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports ACC stations.
Four point cushion at halftime. Duke with the lead. Back after another message from our good friends at Budweiser. The best of the ACC is brought to you by Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Bobby Grimmins has been asking literally everything of Matt Harpering this year, from stitches on his chin to fall away jump shots. And he has been a real catalyst to keep Tech in most games, though it's been a difficult year. And he is among the leaders in points per game, along with Duncan Jamison Booth and James Collins of Florida State. In rebounds, to no one's surprise, it's Duncan and Jamison, two that will be featured tomorrow in that matchup in Chapel Hill. Steve Wojciechowski has been doling out quality dishes throughout his career, and he, along with Coda Thompson, Harold Dean, and Terrell Stokes, lead the way in the ACC. And when you begin to talk about the king of thievery, he's had a few of them tonight as well. Wojo leading the way in our steals in the ACC. At halftime, Duke with a four-point lead, 37 to 33. It's interesting that we end with Wojo talking about steals because it's been turnovers, Billy, that's thwarted Clemson. They've been outscored 15 to four in points off turnovers, and really that's the difference in the game right now. It really is, and of course, we also talked about three-point shooting. You can see Duke with a big advantage there, 12 to zero. Clemson only has taken two, but hasn't made any, and we know that we talked at the top of the game. If you're gonna play a perimeter shooting team that shoots threes, you've gotta hit some. And those are our advanced auto parts, halftime stats. Wojciechowski got a respite at the end of that half, sitting the last 546. He saddled with three fouls as we open the second half. Raycon Sports and Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of ACC basketball is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts, by Pizza Hut, and by Nationwide Insurance. Cameron Indoor Stadium filled to capacity yet again. Steep in tradition and Duke leading by four at halftime. We take a look at the leading scorers, Billy. Langdon has been absolutely unstoppable, short of that desperation shot at the end of the half. 15 for him. Noticeably, McIntyre not seen up there. In fact, he's 0 for 6 from the floor. Wojo back in the lineup, and another telling stat is the three fouls he has. And he can ill afford to pick on either end of the court another foul. A nice, again, curl move by Duke. And notice tonight how many times Duke has run the curl and gone right to the basket for a score as opposed to pulling up for the jumper. 39, 33. Buckner who had to sit with the, some foul difficulty of his own and picked up two fouls in that first half. Clemson went down the stretch without having anybody down in the low post that could score. Code, a jump stop. Offensive foul, player control against Merle Code. You know, Billy, let's take a look at where the points are coming from in this game. To no one's surprise, Duke's perimeter outscoring Clemson's, but they've got to get a more easy opportunities in the paint, this Clemson team. Well, I, I think they just have to keep going down on it. It, it. Every time they milked it, Jameson came off the bench. He had 10 points in the first half. Whenever they went to it, it was very effective. They just haven't been consistent with the look. Oh, nice pop. Buckner airborne. Tipped in. Boy, Langdon has developed so many things. Now he's taken it to the hole tonight. He shot the, the, the three-point shot without the dribble. Uses the pump fake to get the shorter jumper. So difficult to guard. Chris Carrollwell got credit for that tip in. 41-33. Code. Langdon rips it down for Duke. Code and McIntyre too quiet for Clemson to be effective. It'll be a push on Merle Code. Now here we see a technique. You've got to guard him out there. You've got to respect the three. Boom, he gets the ball fake, the head, the eyes, and the hands. Takes Buckner right up off the ground, and he's not going to miss many of those wide open jumps. Code sits down. Christie's come in for him. Earl having picked up his third. Langdon blows past Pass and uses the glass again. Well, he's having quite a night. 
You mentioned he had 25 against Clemson in the first game. Looks like he can more than duplicate that now. Here's Jameson, the guy who had a big game here last year. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, it's interesting how guys sometimes have big games in the same gyms against the same people. Jameson's got a chance to score again. Three on two. McIntyre to Christie. Nice touch by Christie, getting it in traffic off that feed from Terrell. And Tim, you mentioned points off of turnovers in the first half. Duke with a big advantage. Now Clemson comes back with one. Duke that had equaled its largest lead of 10, and now Buckner picks up another reach in foul on Langdon. Here we'll see the steal on the inside, good hands. And then a good hit ahead by Jamison. He really can't get the proper angle for McIntyre, so McIntyre makes it with his dribble. Buckner, by the way, just picked up his third foul. Langdon, it's Irby trying to come over there to stop him. He's been a one-man wrecking crew, either pulling up or taking it all the way to the goal. You see, with these screens that Duke's, Duke's running, it's very difficult to have one man assigned just to Langley because he comes off the screen, creates a switch, and then he has a mismatch. And here's where uh, he's fairly effective as well on the foul line. 88%. Well, that one hit the rim. The thing that impresses me about Duke tonight, Billy, along the perimeter is when they give the ball fake, they don't drive it into traffic, pulling up for that 12-foot jump shot. I mean, we've seen it from Langdon, right. Maple, and others. And there are, there's two. Langdon actually touched the rim. I don't know if we should give him a half a point deduction there. Most of the time, he shoots his free throws. They touch nothing but net. Duke now starting to pick up a pretty good quality lead right here. Clemson not in sync in the start of the second half. Langdon, they give credit for that foul. He does. That's his third. Well, those fouls are beginning to pile up, much as they did in game one back in Clemson in January. Wojciechowski with three, now Langdon three, Buckner, and Code each with three for Clemson. As uh, Ricky Price checks in and Langdon sits down. A pretty nice replacement. Price going in for Langdon. Particularly tonight because Ricky's played very well. Duke in his zone out of bounds. 2-3 zone situation. Determined. Boy, you just know that he can make something happen when they get him the ball down the low post. He's such a good passer down there. He's got good size and can finish the shot as he did there. Eight points in the game for Turbe. Capel. Price keeping it alive. Oh, what a play. Bad job by Christie on the block out. He went to use his physical skills instead of keeping a man off the glass and actually gave up a rebound to a smaller man. trying to get position on the cloud and Roshan will pick this one up. We see Capel coming off of the drive, gets met with a little contact, puts it up. Christie, who just assumed he had position instead of going ahead and putting a body on Price, allows Price to come in for the follow-up. Jamison on the floor with a turbo Christie. Buckner and McIntyre. Wojciechowski, Capel, Carowell, Carmen Wallace, and Price on the floor for Duke. The turnover by the Tigers. Well, we may have an overrule here. Overrule. It was touched. Carowell got a piece of that. Good inside screening that time down by Jamison and Buckner. But the ball was tipped. Tempo. Clemson needs to be much more active in their half court set. And they're almost playing the clock here a little bit. And a lot of dribbles cost them. It really is. Duke really spreading the floor. Getting that defense away from their body. A foul off the offensive glass. Carmen Wallace is going to pick it up. 15-38 remaining in our game. Duke opens up its lead to eight. Third. Third on the team.
Some say the most powerful conference in America. Ray Common, Jefferson Pilot Sports coverage of ACC basketball rolls on. Interestingly, Rick Barnes coming off a, a season last year, finishing 7-9 in the regular season, beat Carolina in the tournament, then took the youngest team into the field of 64, took Georgia to the very limit before losing an opening round game. And Billy, you look back at early season non-conference wins against the likes of Kentucky and South Carolina. That should bode well for Clemson going into this coming postseason. Well, it really will. Uh, the win against South Carolina now, which has really moved up uh, very high, not only in the rankings, but the RPI on their court. And then Kentucky and the neutral floor on a bode well for him. And Turbe uses the glass. He cared, now has 10, 47-41. Capel trying to beauty. baseline feeds Wallace. Count the basket. You know that's really going to be unfortunate because I don't think that ball was going to stay in the cylinder. And Jameson touched it. I would agree. The ball was on the way out and down, but still, if you touch it in the cylinder, it's going to be you're going to get penalized. And there's a situation that ball would have come out, but it was on the cylinder when it was touched by Jameson. 49-41. Turbe now down there posted up. Boy, he's setting some wicked solid screens and back screens. Off the dribble, feeds Buckner. Well, you've been saying it all along. That's feed where it, it is. Feed and fan Buckner. This game is not that difficult. Take what you have the uh, best advantage to use and, and use it. 49 43. <laughs> Newton is on the floor now for Duke. Wallace gets a turbo air ball. Makes him pay. And there's the experience of a senior coming in to play, giving you some quality minutes, doing what he can do and, and not trying to do more than that. Fought long and hard to get appreciable playing time. The senior from Wilmington, Delaware. McIntyre should have recognized he had Buckner with Langdon down inside. Langdon with the three fouls. Didn't go to him early enough. You really have to pick that up. As a guard with the ball in your hands, you have their key player from Duke in a very vulnerable position defensively, and, and McIntyre did not spot it up and get the ball to Buckner. Rick Barnes wanting an explanation from the official. Very slow-paced game. We looked up early on with Duke shooting, and we'd have a game in the 80s. Unless something changes drastically, that's not going to happen here. Price left free over the finish. Rebound cleared by Buckner. And there's Buckner. Catches the ball without jumping in the air because he made a great block. And like what we saw by Christie just a minute or so ago. Andreas Yukunis on the floor. There's a nice lob to Buckner. Can't believe it. Great leaping ability by Wallace, and that's he's gonna get an assist here on the touch. Loose ball out to Price. Oh, there's some there, there were a no, no, that was a foul. And Christie got away with one. Unbelievable. There was a sequence of fouls there. Mike Zuszewski can't believe it, but he remembers that he had one technical early in this ball game, doesn't want another one. That was a, some very poor officiating there. Matter of fact, on the other end, Buckner was so surprised he got the shot blocked. Probably could have been called for a foul grabbing from behind. So Clemson gets a break. Billy Yerkunis didn't even look for the shot. No, he has really lost his confidence. Last year, you remember, one of the premier outside shooters for big men in the league. Just to shell himself offensively this year. Two of 33 from beyond the left court. Code candidate. Loose ball out to Wojciechowski. Code working on a nice streak of games for three-point shooting, but he and McIntyre have really not contributed offensively tonight. Christy Iyer is still without a field goal, isn't he? He's 0 for 3. Christy and Weidman will come in on the next dead ball. Buckner gets that rebound off the deck. There's the dunk down to 
Jameson fouled by Newton. And that's a mismatch. <laughs> Clemson has not been stopped in the paint yet. It's a pretty good pass. Kunis steps down, gets the good bounce pass, creates the angle for himself. And there's Newton creating a foul. Okay, Bull coming back in. Wojciechowski and Carmen Wallace sit down. They got some quality time from Carmen Wallace in that last sequence. Roshan McLeod joining Newton, Cable, Price, and Langdon for the Blue Devils. Jamison barely drew iron. Well, you'll hear from the Cameron crazies over that one. <laughs> well, they can't call an air ball. It touched a little bit. Tipped out by Yerkunis, back to James. Pulled down by McLeod. Price asking for the lob. Good job by Coach staying with him. Price goes crossover into the paint to Newton. From crossover to cross up. Boy, Ricky Price is playing with so much confidence. This is the best he's looked uh, probably since the beginning of his freshman year. That time he got bumped by Jamison into McIntyre and will pick up a foul. His second. Price is great dribbling right here in quickness. Set everything up for Newton. He watched that ball in his hands. Good job. Back after a word from Budweiser. Duke by 10 with 11.16 to play. Nations Bank, the corporate partner of the Atlantic Coast Conference, presents this ACC salute to excellence question. NC State's Chris Gorciani had 20 assists against Maryland in a 91 game, tying an ACC record for most assists in a game. What player did he tie? The uh, answer coming up a little later. Nicole and McIntyre really working on nice stretches of three-point shooting coming into this game. McIntyre with 16 straight games with a three. Code has had a three in 16 of the last 18. Neither one of them have gotten into any kind of rhythm from the outside tonight. Give some credit to Duke in regard to the way they're playing him on the perimeter. But if Clemson's going to be effective, particularly if they don't want to go inside all the time, those two guys have got to open up. There's one. Knocks down the tray. Pretty good patience there, Billy. Good going inside and hit it out. And of course, that can open up the inside as well if you start making some perimeter shot to ex the shooting uh, to extend the defense. That was their first three of the night. 53-46. Here Kunis got caught with his hands, working on Rashawn McLeod. Probably a pretty good foul because McLeod had an easy layup. The foul hadn't taken place. Third foul on Yerkunis. Buckner and McIntyre re-enter. With Witt and Christie going back to the bench. It's awful hot in this arena tonight, so you may see some of these guys that are playing a lot of minutes a wilt a little bit at the end, although both of these teams pretty deep. that shot a bit. He ran and brings it down. Newton really tried to avoid contact on that play as opposed to banging it right back inside. It really cost him. Mismatch there, Buckner and Newton. McIntyre, air ball. Weidman tries to save it. The out of bounds to Duke. Harmon Wallace and Steve Wojciechowski will check back in for the Blue Devils. Newton and Ricky Price take a seat. You're right, Billy. Both teams have a lot of depth, but I get the feeling as this game continues that I see more energetic legs yeah, for Duke. It looked like they've really been sapped a little bit. Oh, boy. Wojo wanted Langdon on a backdoor cut. He didn't take it. On the deck, Rakuna saves it to Buckner. Now numbers for Clemson. McIntyre to one. Not a bad idea, not giving up the easy one. McLeod picking up the foul. Good hustle by McLeod to get back. Clemson sure had the numbers there. Second foul on McLeod, the junior from St. Anthony's in Jersey City, New Jersey. Everybody on the floor, 
Good job that time to get the ball out, and Buckner hits ahead nicely. McIntyre, as we know, is a guy that can finish on the on the assist basis, but uh, Weidman doesn't take advantage of it because McLeod gets back. You know, we talk about the depth of these clubs. Uh, today, the national junior team was announced for the United States to play against the top 12 international junior players in the Hoop Summit game. And four of the 12 announced, Tim, will be coming to Duke next year. That's got to be the first time since uh, well, the Fab Five of Michigan basically put five kids, or put four kids on that team. But uh, Duke will get even deeper. Yurkunas uses the glass. Well, Andreas Yurkunas, who struggled from the perimeter, decides to take a page from Trajan Langdon's offense tonight. And Kans one, Ryan comes into within four. Capel, a leaner. Beautiful pump fake by Jeff Capel on the inside without walking. 55 49. Seven amazing. in the game for Capel. Amazing how Clemson just keeps hanging around in this game. You know, you. Duke just can't put him away. Weidman. Nice Good. move by Tom Weidman. Tom Weidman. Nice positive move. 55 51. That's his first field goal of the night after hitting the free throw. Wallace for three. Look out, Armin Wallace. He's made a huge block. Good follow-ups on the inside. Really some quality minutes by Wallace. Cameron Crazy's becoming a factor in this sequence. There's the mismatch trying to get, get a switch. Rojo is now stuck on a big man. See if Clemson will take advantage of it. Got your Kunis down in the low post. It'll be intentional against Wyman. Why? Now Rick Barnes can't believe it. I can't either. I mean, he's going, he's going for the ball. He made a play on the ball on this play. Watch it right here. He's got, you know, it was aggressive, but it was a play on the ball. Well, McLeod obviously grinning from ear to ear over that one. And that was really a mistake by Clemson on the other end of the floor. They had Yakubis down inside, being guarded by Wojo, and they couldn't get the ball down to it in a low post. My guess is the reason for the intentional was because the, the fists were drawn by Weidman. Although he did go after the ball, but I mean it was a hard foul. But well, I, I think it, you know it was an aggressive play. But I, I didn't think that uh, he was doing anything other than going aggressively at the ball. Just after Clemson had got it to four, Duke gets the break and leads by nine. Back after a word. Here we'll see Clemson in a situation. Now they have Yakunis down inside being guarded by Wojo, but they don't take advantage of it. Here's Weidman coming down. Now he goes down, he goes after the ball and actually makes what could have been a block on the play. It's ball first and then body and gets called for an intentional foul. I don't buy it. Rick Barnes didn't buy it either. Again, the points off turnovers, really the key in this game. Duke leading this game by nine, and they have 13 more points off turnovers, and mistakes like that one by Clemson a moment ago do in large part to it. Capel. Oh, how about that shot? Throwing it up from his hip. Capel has nine. Yeah, let's give this young guy some credit. He comes into his senior year having had quite a career so far at Duke. Finds himself midway through the season, basically spending a lot of time on the bench. Instead of sulking, came back, and now has become a very positive force, not only from a standpoint of his stats, but the leadership he's showing on this ball club. Kudas picks up his point. And when you consider what he meant his freshman year to that team that made a run to the final, sure. Uh, a lot of reality, a big time dose of reality hitting as he was booed by this very crowd that's cheering him tonight earlier in this year. 
Lacuna sits down. Turbay is back on the floor. This is the largest lead of the game. Clemson has 746, but I think they really only have two minutes here to start changing the style of play in this particular game and get some tempo going. They've got to go inside, pound it in there, and get aggressive. They've been playing just a half-court game, kind of slow motion. McIntyre, Jamison, keeping it alive, can't finish. Probably could have had a lot easier shot if he could just relaxed a little bit. Duke really playing their game. And there it is. Langdon for three. The lead catapults to 15. Timeout, Clemson. <laughs> Terrific job by Duke. They're making Clemson play their game, and they are so effective at it. Langdon, who had to sit down with some foul trouble in the first half, is just so good when he comes off those curl moves, either with the jumper, the pump fake, or the drive to the basket. Trajan now has 22. Well, you recall our question, what player other than Corciani had 20 assists in an ACC game? Grayson Marshall had 20 against Maryland Eastern Shore back in 85. Racing a DC area guard. 66 51, our score, seven minutes to play, and a foul spotted. A little bit too late now for Clemson to really start looking for Buckner on the inside. Carmen Wallace picking up his four. Number 21. You know, you had uh, scores, Tim, that you mentioned earlier tonight, and you mentioned that Indiana-Purdue. Isn't it amazing what Gene Cady can do with a team in that Big Ten? Now, he was expected this year to be, I think, eighth in the league preseason. He's got him right up there. Now, they're not going to catch uh, Minnesota for the championship, but he could be a solid second in that league again this year. And how about Indiana? They could be a team with over 20 wins with a very poor conference record. They've got to go to Minnesota yet and the Michigan State. You know, and in the case of Purdue, Billy, I think it's a lot like Clemson. You'd be hard-pressed if you're not within that conference to name a starter for the Purdue team. I think that would be true for a lot of uh, basketball fans outside the ACC where Clemson's concerned. And Langdon, well, they know his name in Clemson tonight. He has 25, 69, 53. Well, that matches what he had down at Clemson. That ball touched nothing. I don't even think the net moved on that last jump shot. McIntyre sees a crease. Can't finish. Lojo, the loose ball. A cloud on the run. Langdon again. Yes, and a foul. Duke University in the number one spot in the ACC and picking up what looks like a big win here tonight. They say here at Duke tonight, we're going north, north to Alaska, where Trajan comes from. He has warmed up this building tonight. 71-53. More exciting ACC basketball coverage coming your way tomorrow night. The block leader, Tim Duncan of Wake Forest in the land of Antoine Jamison and the 12th ranked Tar Heels. Jamison's heels will be rocking as the Deacons come to town tomorrow night at now. Tim, a lot of basketball yet to come this year, but if you start thinking about what Duke's doing right here, the games in the Eastern Regional this year for that number one seed, and that number one seed will come from the ACC in the East. Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and Charlotte, North Carolina. So a big, big advantage if they continue to hold their ground and, and lead this league. Mike Krzyzewski's had a lot of success as the top seed in the East before. Very comfortable there. Well, it's nice not to have that travel situation. You know, just ride down the road and play. Rashawn McLeod. 14 in the game for Brett Butler. They go back and think of the David Thompson, Tommy Burleson National Championship. Played the ACC crown and then played in Raleigh.
for the opening round of the tournament and then went to Greensboro for the national championship. Can't get much better than that, but it's always good to be playing close to home. Maple takes a seat. Bryce coming back in for him. I think it'll be interesting to see. You see this uh, scoring run for the Blue Devils. What they do with the West region where the top seed is concerned. I think you're going to see Minnesota ship that up. You're not going to move Kansas anywhere. Well, you remember Purdue was the top seed out there last year and got bumped off in round two by Georgia. Nobody from the Big Ten advanced beyond the second round. And now you really have to play Duke basketball because they're so good at holding this ball out. Everybody's a good ball handler. Work you on the perimeter. Code got his hand in there. Dallas. Clock was working against him. Had to take the shot. McIntyre comes away with a loose one. Buckner. Reach him foul against Price. But Duke lost a six-point lead in the last 50 seconds of regulation in that first meeting. <laughs> They'll be hard-pressed, Rick Barnes's team, to cut too deeply into this lead with this game in Cameron Indoor. Well, we've seen some incredible comebacks, and particularly that team that we're going to see tomorrow night in North Carolina, what they've been able to do in recent weeks. Mike Krzyzewski screaming at his ball club right now, don't foul. Doesn't want to give Clemson any opportunities to put points on the board with a clock stop. The announcers for tonight's game are selected and compensated by Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports, and the use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. Well, he's equaling his point production, now surpassing it from game one. But even when Clemson was within four, you never got a feeling that they were mounting a serious challenge against Duke. No, I, you know, you looked at the score early in the ball game. It seemed like Duke was in control of the game, at least the way it was being played, and then Clemson would be in, within striking distance. But they really never did get in sync by taking advantage of their biggest advantage, as I said at the top, which is to go down inside. Trying to set a pick. Wojo uses it. And Turbe brings it down for Clemson. Code, McIntyre, Buckner, and Jameson. Still nothing for McIntyre outside. Willie really has not had the kind of game that he's been having uh, night in, night out for Clemson this year. He's 0 for 10. Right? Code can't hit. The Turbe follow. Well, 0 for 10 means he's really not having the kind of game that he normally has. 72 to 59. And Clemson is not going to win without McIntyre having a decent night from the floor and leading this team with a much more aggressive style of play. Tonight they've been very passive. Duke now content to use shot clock with each offensive sequence. It winds down to 10 here. And being a good free throw shooting team, that makes it tough. Off the pit from Landon. Carwell keeping it alive. Duke just quicker to the ball all night. Landon. 30 for Trajan. Buckner. And Clemson might as well go to the bench now because their guys have really lost contact. And when, what you want is some positive momentum on into the next game. The starters are, are wilted, and they're also beaten. See a Turvey walking out to Chase Carowell. They'll get a nice break, too, Billy. They won't play again in the conference until Sunday against Florida State at home. And a, oh, a walk. It goes to reach in. 3-0-4 remaining Blue Devils have opened up their lead to 15. Langdon has 30, a career high. 74-59, the back-to-back -back titles, the run of seven Final Fours over a 10-year span. This program uh, reached the depths when Coach K had to sit out an entire year, was ill. Pete Cadet took over that particular season. It didn't take long to take the ace and the gauze bandage off and get this program right back where everyone in this part of the world believes it's uh, destined to stay. And Rick Barnes stays basically with his starting lineup. 
Buckner, Code, McIntyre still out there. McIntyre giving it up to Buckner. Leans in. Tried for some contact, could not pick up the foul. Gonna try a little traffic defense. Tough to do with Wojo's quickness with the ball. And also, if you make a mistake, a lot of guys from Duke can move without that ball and score. Although right now, Mike Krzyzewski would like to use clock as opposed to getting any more points. Shot clock continuing to wind down under 10 again. It's been that way the last four possessions. McLeod, he pulled the ball right on his hip. Yeah, the ball got caught on McLeod's hip. Mike Krzyzewski's going to get a 20-second timeout. You know, these two teams thrive on defense, Billy, but they go about it differently. The Duke defensive set versus what Rick Barnes likes to do with his ball pressure. Uh, really diametrically different, but both very effective. Well, you know, one of the things also about both of these teams, and I think around the country, we're not seeing that. Maryland is an example. We're not seeing a lot of full-court pressure. Kentucky does it. Most people are really tight on the half-court pressure. Here we see Duke now. They're going to advance uh, up over Wake Forest. Wake has that game tomorrow against North Carolina. How about what North Carolina is facing? They play the four top teams in the league. They've got Wake Forest tomorrow. Then they've got Maryland. They've got Duke, and they've got Clemson. At Clemson, Duke at home, and at Maryland. After coming out of the gates 0-3 in the league, the finish up in the tough shape there. On the jump stop, the foul spotted. Against Duke, against McLeod. This year will be the last year, based on the new format for next year of the play-in game. And we look at the play-in. Herb Sendak's team with that incredible win over Wake Forest. And, you know, that, that's a basketball team that, despite the record, has really been in an awful lot of basketball games. I mean, those kids deserve to pull one out. And I realize the circumstances involved, but they have played so hard and so well, in many cases, shorthanded. Two shots for McIntyre at the line. Florida State and Georgia Tech still battling to see which team will be there matched up against them in that game. I like the idea of eliminating the uh, the play in. Well, Mike Mike Krzyzewski made an interesting point though. If team number nine were to beat number one, they have the greatest advantage going in terms of not having to play the second day. He felt that was too big an advantage for the ninth place team. Wojo was out of bounds. Leading his case with Duke at Silver to no avail. I'm really surprised that both of these coaches are keeping their key players on the floor. It's a hot night out here. The guys have expended a lot of energy. This game is over and has been over about at the five minute mark on. Now there are some noteworthy names that will log DNPs tonight. Guys like Nate James Number of Duke has not seen playing time. No Domzowski. And uh, you, you look at uh, Clemson. Vincent Witt was uh, not effective. Woney, not in the game. Carter, by the way, is having his knee scoped. They're hoping that the senior will have an opportunity to play his final home game. That's some uh, scar tissue they needed to get rid of. And a foul against Langdon. Let's take a look at our food line. MVPs for this game and Trajan Langdon <laughs> that is one of the easier choices we've ever had 11 of 16 from the floor a career high for him he's 11 of 16 and remember one of those shots he missed was the desperation throw at the end of the half so legitimately the shots he really wanted to take he was 11 for 15 and Greg Buckner for Clemson so these two teams will split and they meet again McLeod coming into the game as Carowell sits down. Tony Christie will come in on the next dead ball. Tony Christie into the lineup for Clemson. And Turbe sits down. Full court pressure, and as we said, most of these teams, and both of these teams like to play some pressure, but normally in the half court set. We don't see them picking up full court very often. Price rejected and fouled by Yakunis. That'll be his fifth. There's no doubt in Price's mind, though, where he was going to take that ball. 
Billy, you touched on it at the beginning of the year, and I think the same holds true now. If you're Rick Barnes, your greatest concern going into the postseason, both the ACC and the NCAA tournament, the loss of your Kunis's effectiveness along the perimeter, something he had going for him into the ACC tournament last year. Yeah, he was a terrific outside shooter last year and really caused some matchup problems because of his size being able to step out and hit the three. This year he has not hit it at all. And one of the things you can look at him, he's gained a lot of weight. He had some leg problems and that took away some of his ability to lift. I was watching him shoot before the game. He's basically shooting standstill one-handers. And he's going to have to work on getting up off the ground and, and, and getting a little bit quicker with his shot. And that'll gain him some confidence being able to get it off a little bit better. Because uh, for him to be really effective for this team, he has got to be able to drill that three-pointer. It's easy to talk about stars, but when you make a run in the NCAAs, you generally have that complementary player particularly from an offensive standpoint that really gives the opposition matchup problems and, and your Kunis falls into that category yeah. if, if how about, as well. How about this guy right here is a non-starter falling in the category of a guy who can come off the bench and have yep. a big game for you. Ricky Price played well again tonight. He uh, looks like he's really settling in and being comfortable coming off that bench. Buckner. So adept at getting to the line drawing contact. And, uh, That'll go against McLeod, his fifth. He had just got back into the ball game. We'll see if Newton comes back in or Wallace. And Mike Krzyzewski saying, I really like the way this team plays in regard to the five men on the offensive end playing out on the perimeter. Not much of a low post game and making matchups tough. And that's really interesting when you think like a Wake Forest against the Duke. You know, it, it, are you going to get Duke to play Wake Forest game or Wake Forest to play Duke game? And, and in Winston-Salem, it turned out to be Wake Forest tried to match up with Duke, and it cost them. You would assume, and people say now, you, you hear a lot of talk around the league, we're going to let Tim Duncan get his. One of these games, Tim Duncan's going to say, okay, you want to play that game? Let me get 40. Because that's really, you know, what he's capable of doing. And he's such a great team player that one of these nights when they when he feels that happening, that's what he should shoot for. Just go in and just totally dominate offensively. Timeout taken with 124 to play. And, uh, for those of you viewing our game tonight, I know it's getting late for some of you. Stay tuned for your local news. It'll be coming up immediately after our game. That youngster, I'm sure, is waiting for film at 11. <laughs> we'll return after this message from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Clemson got off to a tremendous start, included in that the Kentucky win at the beginning of the year, but they've lost five of their last nine. And you see the remaining schedule, Florida State, North Carolina, then two tech. And then the ACC tournament. So positioning for them still very positive with respect to the ACC, where they might fall in seeding, and particularly where the national tournament is concerned. Well, when you talk about five of nine, that's a little misleading in this respect. Most of those games were against teams in the top 20. Right. So you're going to lose, and on the road, so you're going to lose some of those ball games. I think their key is getting that positive momentum back. They did not play, in my estimation, a very intelligent game here tonight in regard to what they were going to try to have as a game plan, and they certainly didn't execute very positively in what they were doing. Turpin picking up that foul. His third. As for the Blue Devils, Mike Krzyzewski's team shooting at a number one seed certainly has that opportunity. This game with UCLA, particularly the way Steve Lavin's team has played, and now he's got a new contract, so the heat's off him. That game at Pauley Pavilion, then Maryland, North Carolina. So where national seating is concerned, the UCLA game certainly becomes much more prominent. And very, very prominent. And uh, they had UCLA in their first big national game this year when they played Kansas at home. Very lackadaisical performance. Uh, got blown out by Kansas, but it's an entirely different ball club now. Steve Lavin decided to suspend a couple of players, get their attention. Embarrassment air ball thrown up. And they came off uh, two huge wins this past week to move up into a very strong position in the Pac-10, beating both Arizona and Arizona State on the road. 
shot clock. Man. This is the see that's uh, being taken care of. It's been about the longest last seven minutes of a ball game because at about the five minute mark, there's no question Duke was going to win this thing. Well, it's obvious that Rick Barnes was not going to throw up the white flag. Duke's kept their starters on the floor, and Buckner uses the glass and a quick timeout called by Clemson as they cut it to 10 with just over 54 seconds to play. Buckner up to 20 points now. I know it's a cliche, but many times you say uh, late in games like this when the outcome no longer seemingly is in doubt, you're coaching for the next game. But certainly where tonight's game is concerned, uh, Rick Barnes probably just trying to get the attention of these guys who had a few opportunities while being outplayed to really set the tempo, particularly when Wojciechowski was out with the three fouls yeah. towards the end of the first yeah, half. Yeah, I really thought that there was a period in, the, in that game with Wojo sitting down where Clemson really could have taken control. We looked up at the scoreboard time and time again. Clemson seemed like they were out of it. They'd be down three, down five. There was a case where they might have gone in at halftime with a lead, but that wasn't to be. Duke right now clinging to a 10-point lead with just under a minute remaining here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. ACC Basketball was brought to you by Food Lion, by Budweiser, by Nations Bank, by Pepsi, and by Advanced Auto Parts. Duke trying to avenge uh, that loss in overtime at Clemson, a game that uh, stuck in Coach K's craw for some time. A couple of calls late went against him. The mishandling of the ball by Greg Newton, which could have iced it in regulation. His guys have taken command and attacked Clemson tonight, both offensively and defensively, and that's been the difference in the game. Buckner picks up the foul, his fourth. Here's where I'd really like to see a rule change made, Tim, and, and that is that in the last maybe even two minutes of the ball game, a team had the right to take the ball out of bounds as opposed to having to see this parade to the foul line. It really is not good for the game. And if you're Clemson, you have to do whatever you can to try to win it. So therefore, you are going to commit the fouls, but it really makes for a dull and uninteresting basketball as you go down to the wire. You talk to a number of notables around the, the game of college basketball and they'll tell you that we're about to see probably some major rules changes in the coming year in the offseason. Well, that's one that I would vote for. Yep. McIntyre solo gets the deuce. And a timeout Clemson. That was their last full timeout. So they've uh, exhausted stoppages of play after that timeout. And you know you can't fault the coach because the coach's job is to do anything he can to give his chance a team to win. So that's exactly what Rick Barnes is trying to do out there. Well, among the changes that I've I've heard a little bit about the trapezoid lane, the extending of the three-point shot from 19-9 uh, to 20 feet six inches. You know, those are being talked about. Those are the two prominent ones that that I've heard of just in the last couple of weeks. Well, what's really interesting is you really have three power forces in rules. You have FIBA for the international rules. You have the NBA for the direction that they want to go, and then you have the college scene. And basically, what a lot of people are talking about in those particular two rules that you're, you're referring to would be adopting the international style. And I guess the egos over the past America always said, well, now, wait a second. We're the ones that founded this game. We're the ones that set the rules. And, and But I, I think a lot of people are agreeing right now that the international trapezoid lane, the distance for the three-point shot for the traditional player, non-professional player, uh, makes an awful lot of sense. And so I, I don't think it would be bad to try to get the, the rules a little bit more uniform. For the NBA, you sure wouldn't want to see the three-point line brought in any. No. Uh, because they certainly can handle it. Even in these closing seconds, and a nine-point lead, starters, for the most part, on the floor. Are certainly major contributors for both teams. And a quick foul by Christie. So they have extended, basically, the game that for all intents and purposes was over at the five-minute mark. 
About 30 minutes to play three. And really not good for the game. At the line, the Blue Devils number three, Ricky Price. Rick Barnes' team at one point down by as many as 18, 17. They have cut into the lead to some extent, but it's now back to double digits. Ricky Price, a solid performance, averaging 9.6 coming in, up to 10 points tonight. And as we mentioned in the last six games, now averaging right at 13 points a game. I think the book on him. Oh, hey, Mike, he's just he's going to take 20. 20. The book on Ricky in many, many cases was. Uh, that person right there was only 18 <laughs> years of age when this game started. <laughs> Hanging right in there, though. <laughs> yes, he is. I was going to make mention of uh, Ricky Price, the book on him. You see our game reset. Oh, by the way, only one timeout can be called, and that belongs to Duke. My guess is Mike will uh, give us a break and not call anymore. And that poor little girl saying, when Am I ready for college? Is, when, does, when does the news come on? <laughs> Started out in kindergarten, and she's now ready to go to Duke. Code for three. Drops it through. Clemson still looking to foul, and they do. McIntyre on Langdon. Now I get a chance to finish my point on, on Price. The book on him, Billy, was he didn't like contact, that you could muscle him up. And uh, because he's a finesse player, but I've seen some power in his game tonight. Price has come into the game when Langdon left, and, and Duke's offense really didn't stop. Uh, beating at all. Well, we mentioned it at the top. He came out and missed his first two shots tonight, but the third one he took, you to figure he'd been on a roll of making six in a row. And that's the difference between watching a competent player and a guy that's a little shaky coming off the bench. Guy misses his first shot and looks over at the coach with one eye, misses his second shot, looks over with both eyes, you know. Trajan has 32. And uh, now some perspiration on the floor that needs to be taken care of. We're inventing ways to stop the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this has been a good product up till the, the uh, about the five minute mark. Duke did a good job getting the working like uh, lead. And what we're seeing right now is not entertaining. Code will throw up a 30 footer. Nail it. And it's 80 to 73. Dangerous foul. Oh, it really was. <laughs> Capable. They got away with it. The foul against Clemson, and Wojciechowski will get to the strike. McIntyre picks up the foul, his third. And what Rick Barnes is hoping that he can get Langdon off the foul line. And maybe have Duke miss two and then hit a three. And he's taken about three seconds off on every possession. I was just thinking about the way this game has ended, and uh, certainly you've touched on it a time or two. Rick Barnes will, will never get too much credit for artistic impression. I mean, he goes after games and wins them in a workmanlike style, very physical, and at times ugly. And that's th those are some of the victories. Price got his hand in there and knocked it away. Now look at who's on the floor right now. It's still three starters. They're out there on the floor for Clemson. You've got Buckner, McIntyre, and Cole as starters in this ball game, and a Turbe. So they have four starters still out there. McIntyre a three. Buckner the follow. 82-75, 11 ticks left, and Clemson just keeps on fouling. Jameson gets this one. Now, how many people would vote against my rule? <laughs> you know, it, it eliminates the pressure on the coach to try to do this because, you know, you just say, no, we'll take the ball out of bounds, so it makes no sense to foul. But more importantly, and the fans at uh, Duke, which uh, create some of the most uh, unique cheers, said, give it up, give it up, <laughs> you know. The thing, you know what I don't ever understand about their, their, their students, and of course I realize they 
have high IQs and good college board scores. But how does the guy over in like row 43, how does he get in unison on that cheer? And the first time they do it, I mean, they don't pass notes around. One guy starts it and boom. In the second line, everybody's in unison. Yeah, the student body definitely teaches the alumni here <laughs> when it comes to the crowd and its impact where the game is concerned. Well, now you see the sarcastic applause after Clemson does give it up. Mike Krzyzewski's team avenges an earlier loss in overtime at Clemson in January as the sixth-ranked Blue Devils Number one in the ACC for now. Beat the Clemson Tigers 84-77. Wake Forest will try to keep pace with the Blue Devils against North Carolina tomorrow on most of these Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports ACC stations. For Billy Packer, our producer Dave Beringer, and our director tonight, Tom Smith. Tim Brando saying so long. You have been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network. Good night from Cameron Indoor Stadium.